So in this video, we're going to look at how to break objects apart. Rather, we're going to look at how collisions can instantiate a new object that then will break apart or have multiple pieces that will then seem like the original was breaking apart. What I have imported here into Unity is the VRTK so that we can do this stuff in VR. And I also have a crate as a whole. So it's an, a complete crate 3D model here. I also have the demolition crate, so the demo crate here. Then we have a sword that we will slap the crate with. We could also uh, just drop it or throw it or create any other kind of collision and that would but then also destroy these specific objects. So in the demo scene that I've set up here, we just have a plane and we have a cube over here. The cube is just so that we can place the sword somewhere. Let's start with the sword. I'll just import it into the scene. So it's rather large, which means we need to scale it down. Let's just scale it. And I'll place it on top of the cube over here. To be able to actually have this sword interact with other objects, we of course need a collider on it. In this case, we'll be choosing a mesh collider. So I'll click add component in the inspector. I'll choose mesh and then the mesh collider and I'll check the convex button. So here now we can see the convex collider that has been added to the sword. We also want to make it grabbable from VRTK and uh, here we'll just use the window that uh, VRTK has provided. So window, VRTK, setup interactable object. So I'll make this glow bright green, close it again, and then just set up selected objects. This will add a lot of extra scripts and stuff to the inspector over here, along with a rigid body and stuff like that. So it's also affected by gravity. So next up is we want to actually import the crates themselves. We will uh, just realign our scene here. I'll take the crate as a whole and I'll drop it into the scene. I'll just leave it this big. We can always change the size if we wanted to. I'll move it to the bottom of the uh, hierarchy here so we better can see the object. It doesn't have any colliders. It doesn't have any rigid body or anything like that. So we'll start by adding a box collider to it. Then again, we will make it interactable. So we'll go to window, VRTK, set up interactable object. We'll choose yet another color. In this case, let's make it glow red and then just set up selected objects. This will also add a rigid body to the object itself. So next up here is we want to set up the prefab that this object should break into. So this is the demo crate. So demolition crate. I'll drag that into the scene first so that we can have a look at it. And we'll also be creating a prefab from this one. So I'll hit F to zoom on to that object. And as you can see, it just basically is a container containing multiple boxes based Basically, the original crate over here just broken into smaller bits. So what we want to do here is we want to select all of the individual parts of the demo crate. What we will then do is we will uh, go in here and we'll add a component, a box collider, because any or all of the individual parts here that we want to fall apart individually need to have its own collider. It also needs to have each and every one its own rigid body. So we'll also add a rigid body component. This is basically what we need to do. So now we will take the demo crate again here and we'll drag it back into to our 3D folder here and it'll ask me if I want to create a original prefab. So yes, I want to create a new prefab based on this demo crate. So I'll now delete the demo crate. What we now need to do is we need to set up the script that will actually handle the collision uh, calculation and see if it should break it apart or not. So I'll select the crate hole. I'll go to the to the far bottom. I'll click add component and I will create a destruction script. So and I'll hit enter, set up a new script. So as soon as the script is added here, I can double click it. So this opens up Visual Studio. So we'll start by setting up a few variables. So first of all, we need the game object that we want to instantiate. So the destruction worm. So we'll set up a public because then we can access it from outside in the inspector and we can just drag and drop the specific game object that we want. Public game object, and we'll call it the break version. Then we also want to have the break force. So the force enacted upon the object to make it break. So we'll set up a float value for the break force. So public float, and I'll just call it B force. I'll set the default value to one. Then we also need to figure out the rigid body of the current object because rigid bodies are used for calculation of the velocity and stuff. Here we'll just set it up as protected. And it's a rigid body and we'll just call it RB for rigid body. Then we also want to have a variable that checks if our object has been destroyed or not. This is just so that the update or the functions themselves don't replicate on themselves so that they don't do a lot of collisions at once and just instantiate a bunch of these objects at once. We only needed to instantiate it once. So I'll set up a private integer. I'll just call it active and I'll set it equal to zero as its default value. So in this start function here, we want to have our rigid body for the component that we're currently on or the game object that we're currently on. So RB should be equal to get component and the component we want to get is the rigid body parentheses. And that's basically what we need here. The update function we don't need. So select it and delete it. We'll set up a new on collision enter function. We'll make it private. So private void and it's called on 
collision enter and we'll set collision collision so any collision that happens to the object should be calculated so even if different objects smack together they would then calculate if they should break or not so in here we'll set up a if statement to figure out if the force that has been enacted upon the object is high enough so we will say an if and the conditional statement here is the rb dot velocity dot magnitude if that is higher than our B force, then of course it should do the collision. However, we also want to check if it had already been activated. So and active is equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, it should not do the calculation or should not do whatever is inside of the if statement here. Curly brackets. First of all, we want to add one to active to make sure that this if statement has been triggered. So we'll say active and double plus. We'll just add one value to that. So it'll change from zero to one. So then we want to use the function instantiate. We want to instantiate the break version, which we will be selecting out in the inspector in a second. And we want it to instantiate at the position transform dot position of the current parent that we have here. So transform dot position, another comma, and then transform dot rotation so that the rotation is also identical. So next up, this is where we can get a bit fancy if we want to, we want to set a bit of a force to this explosion. So it doesn't just collapse, it actually kind of explodes. So we will say the rigid body add explosion force to this. And um, this is a function and it'll take a few parameters. The first parameter that it'll take is a float value of the explosion force. We'll set it to 10 F. So the next value is the explosion position. We'll set that at the center of the object. So we'll just set up a vector three uh, and we'll say dot zero. So it's at the zero point of the object itself. So another comma, and then it needs the radius of this explosion. We'll just leave it at zero F. So it's just at that core of the object. If you want it to be bigger or have an influence on other objects and stuff, you can always set this value higher. So final thing we want to do is we want to destroy the original object because now we have instantiated the broken version. Destroy and then in parentheses lowercase game object. So it's the current game object that we are on. This is basically what we need to do to set up this simple script. So save the file and jump back into Unity. So here back in Unity, we can see that we suddenly have a few extra values here that we can fill out. So the break version and the B force. We'll take our demo crate that we created and drag it onto the game object slot here for the break version. And this should basically already function. So if I hit play. So here inside of VR, I can grab the sword. I can look at the crate. I can slap at it and you can see that it falls apart. So another thing that we could do is we could take a, a whole lot of these crates. So here the crates are now stacked. If I want, I could uh, grab one crate. I could throw it. It will break on impact. I could take another crate. I could smack it against the others and they will all break apart. So this script, of course, has a few other things you could use it for. It doesn't only have to be destruction of objects. It could also be like um, having one object change into another, like for instance, into a toy rabbit. So that's basically how you can destroy objects in a few very simple steps. Thank you for watching everyone.